Any RPA COE center of excellence with an RPA platform by UiPath needs several variants of the RE framework. And it is not hard to adopt these best practice project templates. This video shows in 20 minutes how to create a one-click GitHub template of the RE framework that works as a performer with input data in an Excel file. The estimated real-life effort would be 4 hours for research, implementation, documentation and publishing of the template. The demonstrated code is roughly based on the industry-wide known use case rpa-challenge.com. Not only will the actual implementation in the UiPath Studio be shown, but also key aspects of Git and GitHub. To follow along what is needed are any recent version of the UiPath Studio, a Git command line client like Git for Windows, and a terminal for with example PowerShell and a GitHub account. This content is aimed at intermediate RPA developers and members of an RPA center of excellence. This is a UiPath Studio Community Edition version 2022.10.3. Start by creating a new RE framework project in a folder with a temporary name. This repository will only be used to push the initial code to a remote location. Put the project under version control. In the status bar, click git init. Select the current folder. This will create a .git folder with various defaults being set. In the status bar, click the pencil icon to open the commit changes dialog. Keep the select all. Write a commit message, for example, initial import RE framework version 2022.10.3. And click commit, commit only. This created in our local repository a branch named main. This branch will not be used for development. For development purposes, create a new branch via the status bar. Click on the branch symbol, then manage branches, click the plus sign, Enter a name for the feature branch like RE Framework Excel and click Create Branch from Main, click Save. This branch name, RE Framework Excel, will be used repeatedly until the code template repo is published. Go to your GitHub organization and create a new repository. Give it the name you want to publish the code template under. Do not initialize the repo with a readme file. Notice that no repository template exists yet. Copy the link to the repository. Here the HTTPS connection is demonstrated. In UiPath Studio in the status bar, click Manage Remotes, click the plus sign, add the URL and a name. Give the remote a descriptive name like GitHub. Then in the status bar, click on the upload symbol to push to remote. Select the remote in the pop-up dialog and click Save. At this time, no GitHub authorization might exist and a warning pop-up instructs to install the UiPath GitHub application. Do so by clicking on the link. A browser opens on the URL github.com apps UiPath installations new. If your user is a member of many organizations, select the right one. Here for demonstration purposes, only select repositories is clicked and from the drop-down menu the Just Created repository selected. Click Install. Back in the UiPath Studio, click Cancel and in the status bar click the Upload symbol again to push to the GitHub remote. The code is now pushed to GitHub. When prompted for credentials, choose Sign in with GitHub. Here the dialog shows that UiPath Studio is already signed in, but as that was for another organization, the permissions for the new repository do not exist yet. Alternatively, a browser page might open. On github.com, refresh the repository view to check if the feature branch RE Framework Excel was pushed successfully. Create a parent folder to hold all process-related files. In the UiPath Studio, open the file explorer and create a new folder named Process. Move Framework Process XAML into Process. To prepare for easy testability in the same branch, open the file location of the config xlsx file, make a copy of the file and name it config underscore test.xlsx. In the file main XAML, change in the state initialization, add invoke workflow framework init all settings XAML, 
change the argument in config file to its default value data test xlsx. Future code in this series will build up on that change, but not for now. Follow the related issue on GitHub for updates. Commit and push the changes with a descriptive commit message like adding config underscore test and moving process XAML into own folder. Currently, the local repository has the code base to implement the actual adoption of the RE framework for input data in an Excel file. And in GitHub, there is a repository with an empty initial branch, which will act as a central shared location, which is, by the way, only one of the many workflows Git supports. To change from queue item to data row, changes need to be made in the config file, in framework get transaction data XAML file, in frameworks set transaction status XAML file, in the main XAML and in the process XAML files. These changes will later be documented in the license file. To adopt the default config file, open the config underscore test xlsx file. In the sheet constants, change max retry number to 2. In settings, delete the two rows, orchestrator queue name and orchestrator queue folder. Change logf business process name to, for example, RE framework template Excel. Future forks from this code repo should always change this logf business process name. The location of the input data file is made configurable by creating two config settings with the key input data file name, the value challenge.xlsx, and with the key input data file path, the value data backslash input. To be able to execute the project, a placeholder input data file shall be implemented here. The file is from the industry wide known rpachallenge.com and is implemented as a placeholder. The resulting code will only need minor adjustments in future forks from this code template. This concludes the changes in the first file out of five. Commit and push the changes, for example with a commit message, initial configuration in config underscore test xlsx. In the file process XAML, open the arguments panel and change the argument in transaction item type from queue item to data row. This is all that needs to be done in process.xaml. This concludes the changes in the second file out of five. From the project panel, open get transaction data.xaml and change the argument out transaction item type from queue item to data row. To obtain a placeholder file to implement reading input data in an Excel file against, go to rpachallenge.com and click Download Excel. Here the browser Edge is used and opens by default an Office Online version instead of downloading the file. To fix this, click the horizontal ellipsis, open Settings, go to Downloads, and set OpenOffice files in the browser to false. While in the settings, take note of the download location. Now the click on rpachallenge.com on the Download Excel button will place the input data on the local file system. Move the file to the folder as configured in the previous step. Future forks from this code template will need to implement their own file retrieval. To always have a reliable reference of the file, especially for use with modern design activities, make a folder in the same file hierarchy and name it Example Files, place a copy of the downloaded file in there. Its use will be shown in about a minute. Reading this input file shall only happen once per run. To implement this in the workflow getTransactionData.xaml, delete the activity getTransactionItem, track an if activity in the same spot with a condition IO DT transaction data is nothing. Transaction data is a default RE framework variable all the way up to main XAML. 
If its value is nothing, this means the execution is in the first pass into the getter transaction state. So the input data file shall be read. To implement this, track into the then condition an Excel process scope and track a use Excel file activity inside. Check the property template in the appearing file picker, choose challenge.xlsx. Drag a read range into the use Excel file. Conveniently choose Excel sheet, sheet 1 via the plus icon. Optionally add dot range A1. The output is then saved into the variable IODT transaction data. This is the reason why a copy was stored in example files. It does not need to contain production data, but only be in the same sheet and format. Great for bug fixes and debug runs in incident resolving. The adoption of the RE framework for input data in an Excel file will simply loop over this data table transaction data, which is the default data table in RE framework. To not just read the template file, but actually the to be downloaded file, point use Excel file to the configured values. Never ever hard code these values, even in the earliest phases of development. Always go via the config dictionary. Make the implementation a bit more robust against unwanted effects by unchecking safe changes and unchecking create if not exists. Remember that we read this file only on first pass, as identified by the if condition of IODT transaction data being nothing. Still, the actual transaction item must be updated within each and every loop. To implement this, track another if activity underneath the retry mechanism. Make the condition if IODT transaction data dot rows dot count is bigger or equal to in transaction number. RE framework keeps track of the transaction number by incrementing this integer value. So this integer can be used to access a row in the data table. This means the condition is true as long as the incrementing transaction number has not reached the final row in IODT transaction data. Then assign out transaction item a single row with IODT transaction data dot rows and in brackets in transaction number minus one. The minus one is to offset the transaction number starting at value one with a data table having a zero based index. Else set out transaction item to nothing. RE framework does determine by nothing if it transitions into the end state or not. To handle Excel application in the depth of the RE framework files is not intuitive and likely hard to maintain. To refactor the code written just now, go back to that retry and add a first log message, give the resulting sequence a descriptive name like read input file, right click the sequence and extract this workflow, place it in a newly created folder process slash Excel, which will become a place for all Excel application related code. Reading the input data files needs some sanitation, so open the newly created workflow read input data, track a filter data table activity after read range, specify IODT transaction data to use in the filtering, click configure the filter and select remove when column zero is empty. This should hold true in any future forks from this code template. This concludes the changes in the third file out of five. In the file setTransactionStatus.xaml, open the arguments panel and change the argument in transaction item type from QItem to data row. Now code in the flowcharts, nodes, success and business exception and system exception needs to be changed. In success, delete the setTransactionStatus successful activity. At this point, simply replace it with a log message. Depending on the use cases, future forks from this code template might want to implement, for example, writing into a status column of the same input data file. Repeat in the node business exception, delete the set transaction status business exception activity, replace it with a log message. In the node system exception, delete the if activity named if transaction item is a queue item system exception, 
which is located after the screenshot. Replace it with a log message. This concludes the changes in the fourth file out of five. In the file main XAML, open the variable panel and change the variable transaction item type from queue item to data row. Several warnings will appear with two types of fixes needed. The assign activities setting to nothing do not automatically adopt, at least in this UiPath Studio version. Clear the fields and re enter, and the error will disappear. Invoking workflows have their import arguments affected by the change from queue item to data row, so open the invoked workflows arguments and manually make sure all transaction items are of type data row and have the correct variable passed in. This concludes the changes in the last file out of five. Commit and push the changes with a descriptive commit message like adopting RE framework to work with input data in Excel file. Currently read input data is called in every transaction loop, but nothing done inside this code. To make this a little bit more performant, open get transaction data, drag in an if activity and surround the retry invoke workflow with the same condition IODT transaction data is nothing. Commit and push the changes with a descriptive commit message like refactored get transaction data to only call read input file conditionally. Regarding the source code management, nothing has changed yet and currently the local repository has the original vendor code in the main branch the feature implementation in the branch RE Framework Excel and the remote repository on GitHub has the feature implementation up to date in the branch RE Framework Excel. There is no gitignore file yet and the project JSON is still the default one. A good example for projects with modern design can be found on GitHub by empower AI in the repo UiPath gitignore. From the project panel, open the file explorer, add a text file named .gitignore, make sure not to accidentally add a txt file extension and place the content from empower ais file inside. Commit and push the changes with a descriptive commit message like adding a .gitignore file. In the project panel, open the project settings and add a short description. While there, have a brief look at some of the default settings. The RE framework is licensed under an MIT license. It is customary in code like XAML files to have only one file in the top level hierarchy, as it is not possible to place header comments in every file. Here I update just the license file in the top level folder, so potential forks of my public repo on GitHub can evaluate the license conditions for my changes. Commit and push the changes with a descriptive commit message like preparing a release candidate. Every user of Git should know the limitations of the respective Git GUI and how to overcome them. To utilize the features of Git, any Git GUI installations should have in parallel a Git command line client. At minimum, because tutorials on the internet will most likely reflect the command line commands. Currently, the local repository has the original vendor code in the main branch, the feature implementation in the branch RE Framework Excel, and the remote repository on GitHub has the feature implementation up to date in the branch RE Framework Excel. On GitHub, the main branch should have the up-to-date implementation, but without the history of commits and the commit messages, but rather in a condensed version only. To ensure that the soon-to-be GitHub template repository is fully functional, a fresh clone of the temporary development branch RE Framework Excel is made, here shown with the UiPath Studio. Get the HTTPS location to the repository on the GitHub remote. 
copy the remote URL from GitHub and clone the repository in UiPath Studio. One way to achieve the condensed history is to create a new master branch and before pushing to the shared remote repository, rebase its commits to a condensed number of commits. Change directory into the freshly cloned repo. Have a look at the previous commits and their abbreviated commit hashes with git log dash dash one line. Note the commit hashes. In this example, the oldest starts with D9934BE. Create and switch into a branch named master by git chatout b master. Start an interactive rebase with git rebase dash i D9934BE. All commits since that commit are shown as they were performed on top of D9934BE. Long story short, replace on all but the latest top line the word pick with the word squash. The resulting concatenation of commit messages in multi-line format can then be rewritten. Here I pick the conveniently phrased adopting RE framework to work with input data in Excel file, but could have written anything on lines not starting with a hash sign. The branch is unknown on GitHub until now, so the push needs some extra arguments. Git push dash dash set dash upstream GitHub master. On GitHub there is now a master branch and the repository is only a few clicks away from being a template repository. Go to the repository settings, click branches. Change the default branch, because this repo is new and nowhere else used, a change of the default branch is uncritical. Click general and check the box template repository. That's all that is needed to make a repository a template repository. Test the template by creating a new repository, choose the newly created from the drop-down list, Typically only the default branch is needed. Here the codename Starry Argon is used, as this is the codename of my planned rpachallenge.com implementation in the near future. Open UiPath Studio, clone the newly derivative of the RE framework with input data from Excel files. 